C cellulosic biomass is um, biomass that's pre pre predominantly made up of fibrous materials or you know, the plant cell walls. So examples of cellulosic biomass include um, like corn stalks or um, various fibrous grasses like switchgrass. Could be sawdust, wood. It's all made up of the primarily of the molecule called cellulose. Currently, almost all of our fuel comes from petroleum, and um, there's significant challenges associated with that. It's not renewable. So, you know, current estimates are that if we could figure out how to take all the cellulosic biomass um, that's available in the United States, approximately a billion tons every year, and convert it into biofuels, then that could replace 30% of our um, tr transport to annual transportation fuels. So the Great Lakes Biology Research Center has the Research Experience for Teachers program where you get um, science teachers who spend seven weeks working in GLBRC labs doing hands-on research related to sustainable biofuels and then developing labs and classroom activities they can bring back to their students. Travis came and was a participant in our program. We worked together on his biofuels research and developing a lab where, where students could do the same process that GLBRC scientists are doing where take, they take cellulosic biomass sources and then trace the process of converting them into sugars and then ethanol. One of the wonderful things about CB2E in terms of um, engagement and levels of process of uh, materials is they can see the whole gamut of um, the beginnings of where that energy comes from, the inputs into that system, and then leading into kind of the, the, the tangledness of how can they pull out that energy, and that's what the whole lab is really about. The first process is deciding what samples they want to convert and students can decide what samples that they think will have the most potential energy in them. The next step is to do the pretreatment um, stage which involves first grinding it up and cutting it up. Um, after that the, the biomass needs to be pretreated or boiled in this case um, for about 20 minutes or so. That helps loosen up the cell walls of the plants and makes the cellulose accessible for the next stage in the process then you can add a cellulase enzyme to your samples. The cellulase enzyme then converts the cellulose and the biomass into glucose. And then finally, when you have the glucose in your tubes, you can add a small amount of um, just standard baker's yeast and then go through the fermentation process. And then throughout the process, students can measure both the, the matter and energy transformation, so both how much glucose is being produced at each stage, and you can use simple blood glucose meters to do that. Um, and then uh, at the final, final stage, um, students can measure how much ethanol they produce, and there's classroom grade ethanol probes that work really well for this purpose. One of the, the, the things that first comes to my mind when you, you know, how were the students engaged, what, what were they doing, what was unique, um, is the fact that they all had legitimate choices that they made that made what happened over the next week and two weeks theirs. It, they owned it. Um, it wasn't something that was um, kind of put, up, put on them, all right, you're going to investigate this process and here's what you're going to do. It was, all right, I want you to think about, again, your lives, how it connects up. You make some choices on your investigation. You do a true scientific investigation that parallels, again, what's happening um, live in research facilities down the street in our case. And so um, to have them actually doing science, um, making um, inquiries and comparing and arguing with one another about results. Um, this is all part of that, that part that's referenced in the article about you know, scientific claim and, and fitting into um, this larger framework of how science operates. It's not completely happening in the lab. So we really tried to simulate that in a sense in a classroom uh, with multiple classes and I felt we were pretty successful um, and the fact that many of them wanted to form little uh, bioenergy clubs <laughs> just on their own <laughs> to continue to investigate kind of what in the world they could find that would eventually um, kind of connect to producing this liquid energy was just wonderful to see.